I can recreate my entire Apple productivity system in Notion. Apple Notes, Reminders, Calendar, everything. It's more powerful, more flexible, and technically free. So why am I still hesitant to make the switch? Well, it has nothing to do with the features of Notion. It's October 2025, and the app of the month is Notion, and it also happens to be the best app at making you feel productive. In this video all about Notion, I will start with some of the newest features, what I like, what I don't like, and the fundamental dilemma that I have with using Notion. Kicking it off with some of the new features, Notion hosted a conference recently where they announced Notion 3.0. It was an AI-packed update that features plenty of quality of life improvements. Things like faster databases, better performance for large databases, a new map view, and a host of upgrades to Notion AI, including agents that can access and do work within your workspace. These AI agents now being able to go in and even update databases for you solves one of my biggest gripes with Notion, which is the amount of things that you can distract yourself with inside of the app. So pulling that out, giving that task to AI to set the thing up how you want it to be set up allows you to then focus more on actually doing the work and less time just playing around to make a pretty looking dashboard. This is now a key advantage to Notion. And there's plenty to like in Notion. It's a pretty fast app once you're in, snappy text writing experience. It's Markdown like. So some of the syntax that you know and love if you write in Markdown for headings and subheaders, bold italics, all of that works inside of Notion. In case you struggle to learn new keyboard shortcuts like I do. Moving to a new app for the first time, a whole new set of keyboard shortcuts to learn can be overwhelming. A lot of times people in videos like these start to throw keyboard shortcuts at you because they're so used to using the app. In my case, I really don't know all the keyboard shortcuts. I struggle, I still have to look them up. So having some basic formatting via Markdown really helps me. And then there's a slash menu command, slash command menu is what they call it. And uh, if you forget how, what you're trying to do at the beginning of any new line, you can just type the forward slash and start typing. So this gives you the ability to quickly format without having to dive in and memorize a bunch of shortcuts. Notion at its core is a block text editor. And as somebody who is now making really long you know, video script type documents, it helps a lot to get all my ideas out onto the page, just basically vomit them all onto the page and then organize them later. This block texting ability of being able to move paragraphs around is really helpful for me and I assume other writers and maybe other people that use Notion. Much easier than trying to copy and paste sections of text in Apple Notes, even though they have collapsible section headers now. Notion also has an excellent linking system. You can link pages together. You can link databases together with various relations. Everything is easily connected in Notion. I say easily, but you know, there is a little bit of setup that you have to do here more easily now with AI tools. You can even link specific blocks of text between notes. So something that I commonly do is go in and look at my Readwise highlights in Notion. So if I'm writing an article or a post about the book or podcast, whatever I was referencing, I can put that block of text or that quote directly into my new document. And then if I were to make any changes to it, it would update it in the original Readwise document as well. This is something that Markdown editors like Obsidian, you can do, but the implementation in Notion is easier for somebody like me who also isn't super experienced in Markdown. And then Notion's interface is one of the cleanest on the market when it comes to a note-taking, productivity, personal knowledge management app, whatever you want to call this. Once you start writing, everything just kind of gets out of the way in Notion, and it's a really pleasant experience to just write in Notion. I already mentioned some of the integrations and automations. I'll start with Readwise and Snipped. These are two things that I use to gather information from whatever I am reading or listening to. 
And the key to both of these things in Notion is that they are automatically synced. You set it up once and then you don't have to touch it again. You then have a database of all of your Readwise highlights that's automatically updated anytime you put new ones in on Kindle. And for Snipped, anytime you finish an episode with new snips inside of it, you have a Snipped database inside of Notion that's automatically updated as well. I mentioned this removes a ton of friction from my daily writing. So anytime I want to reference these for a newsletter or a social post, I have easy access to do so. I don't have any extra steps to go manually update or import them manually via Markdown. On the automation front, Notion AI solved some of my biggest challenges with Notion, and that is setting up these databases. I set out to recreate my Apple Notes, Reminders, and Calendar system inside of Notion, and I struggled. I worked on that for about an hour a week for, we'll call it, a month. And then I started to use tools like ChatGPT and Claude, which have MCP integration with Notion as well now. So you can go in and have Claude or ChatGPT make updates or give you suggestions on how to set up your databases and link them together. Ultimately, Notion AI, the AI inside of Notion, was the best solution for me. It helped me not only finish off the setup of the relational databases between where I hold my notes for my videos and where I put my tasks for the videos, it also helped me set up an automation between the two. So when I create a new video specific to this channel, an automation will run and tasks will automatically be created and linked to that video. This then gives me the main glue that holds all of my system together, which is putting these tasks on the calendar. If you've been here for a while, or if you haven't, you know I love to see my Apple reminders on my Apple calendar, so this system inside of Notion does the same thing. When I schedule the tasks inside of my task list database, then they show up on Notion calendar. Check. Ultimately, having the choice between which AI agent you want to use, so inside of Notion, now there are Notion AI agents, so you can give them specific tasks. You could have a productivity one that does something for you. You could have a database setup one that's specific to tweaking your system. You can have custom instructions, download. Uh, they have templates online, just like everything else in Notion, that you can download so that if you wanted to have a different agent set up, it's really easy to do so. Then also with MCP support, having the ability to choose ChatGPT or Claude, basically at this point, wherever you're subscribing to AI, except for Google Gemini, you can pick and choose whatever uh, AI tool you want to integrate with your Notion system. And then lastly, on the what I like front was this system recreation. So I ultimately did end up successfully recreating my Apple Notes reminders and calendar system directly inside of Notion. It really is living up to the do it all application. I have a Kanban set up to move videos through the production steps. I have linked tasks for each one of those videos that show up on the calendar. And while I was skeptical at first that I could make an all-in-one solution work, it really does function pretty seamlessly. The downside for me is I'm still having trouble letting go of the Apple productivity apps. We use Apple reminders for family items here. I like the interface of Apple Calendar better and just the mental load of switching to new calendar app in addition to the new notes app is slightly too overwhelming for me at the current time. Now that's a whole lot of good on Notion, but it wouldn't be a true objective review if there weren't some things that I didn't like. So setup is still my biggest gripe with Notion. Getting in there as a new user, there is a ton to learn. I already mentioned new keyboard shortcuts. There's layouts to learn. There's templates that you could download. They are constantly adding new features because it's actually getting developed, unlike Apple Notes. The app navigation works a little bit differently. It's more browser-like. There's the slide over views. You can have custom database views. You can jump around between pages. You can pin pages to the top. You can have tabs across the top. It's a totally different experience if you're used to a typical notes app. I'd say like Apple Notes, Bear Notes, Obsidian is slightly more Notion-like, 
Um, and craft is in a category all on its no own for interface. For me, the mobile experience right now is pretty terrible. I really don't like the way navigation works on mobile, and that's one of the biggest downsides for me. I think there's two things going on here. One is I'm not really familiar with the app. I don't have years and years of experience. My first thoughts of opening up on the phone is that, man, I would never use this to quickly jot down an idea for a video. And that quick idea entry is something that I do all the time. Now, I will admit it's chaotic in Apple Notes, right? I, I might do it as a new note. I might put it in my idea hub. I have ideas scattered all over the place in Apple Notes. So in Notion, I could give myself an idea hub page and I could use something like Apple Shortcuts to make quick entry a little bit easier. But there's yet another setup task that I have to do. So I often use quick entry on Apple Notes on my phone or with CarPlay. And the fact that those two things are missing right now is definitely a big detriment and one of the hurdles that I need to get over if I were going to jump into this system full time. So ultimately, there's a really steep learning curve. You might open up Notion and feel totally overwhelmed, but it can be as easy or as complex as you want it to be. So if you wanted to just open it up and make a new page inside of a database every time that you went to work inside of the app, you could do that. You don't need tags. You don't need a Kanban system. You don't have to do tasks inside of Notion. And from that standpoint, that's pretty good. But the flexibility ultimately leads to feature creep. It's one more thing that I could add to my system. You could start out that way really sim <laughs> simple. And then it's, oh, I bet it can do this. Oh, I bet I can add that. It always feels like there's something to tweak. And from that standpoint, the setup overhead is just huge with Notion. There's a giant time investment required. And so if you have a system that is actually working right now for you, it may not be worth it to put all of that time in. I've basically spent years in my Apple productivity system with almost no customization and very limited features tweaking things ever so slightly to make it more efficient. I figured out something that just works for me. So adding in the complexity of Notion might not be worth it for most people. And as I've made these videos about Notion recently, I've noticed that they're some of the longest videos on my channel. There's so much to talk about with Notion. I see now how there are pages dedicated to just this app and they've been doing it for years now. Lastly, on the setup front, every time you do want to add a new feature, that requires more research and testing. Even if it is talking to an AI bot and having them do it for you now, you still have to know what you're asking for, how to ask it, and then test it to make sure it's implemented properly in your workspace. This leads to what I call the customization trap. So in Apple Notes and Reminders, like I said, there's basically nothing to customize. You put your folders, you use tags, you can use smart folders. That's about the extent of the customization of the system. Notes is a notes app. Reminders is a task app. Calendar is a calendar app. There is not one whole solution to do all three of those things inside of the Apple productivity system. And lately, this has me feeling in Notion like, Oh, wow, that would be a great Notion database. Every time I think about something that could benefit from having a database structure, it's one more thing to create, one more thing to do. And then I ask myself, will I even use it? The risk here is endless optimization instead of actually being productive. And inside of Notion, it's really easy to be productive and not actually get anything done. So this is the fundamental dilemma of Notion. It is a free app that truly is do it all. It's a jack of all trades. It's a pretty good notes app. It can handle tasks. It can even be like a CRM if you needed it to be. But what you don't pay for in money, you pay for in time. Time to set up a new workspace, figure out your relations, enter new formulas, make automations, create beautiful databases. This can lead to feeling productive versus being productive, which Cal Newport has deemed pseudo productivity is the term he uses to describe that. It's like at work, if you answer more Slack messages and reply to more emails, the number went up during the day. 
but did you really accomplish anything? So from that standpoint, my simple Apple system keeps me focused on the tasks. I'm either writing and managing my tasks or scheduling them out inside of the calendar. Is it boring and monotonous at times? Absolutely. But that's also the beauty of this system. You have to ask yourself, I won't be able to answer, answer this for you, if powerful flexibility is worth the mental overhead of using Notion. Ultimately, though, I am finally understanding why people would use Notion in the first place. Though now I've created my own confusion with fragmentation between my system. I have some active projects in Apple Notes. I have some active projects in Notion. At some point, I'm going to have to cut bait and pick a system because the mental overhead of using two different systems right now is also too much for me. Notion is an extremely powerful and great software system bordering on an ecosystem at this point. With Notion, Notion Calendar, and Notion Mail, they really have a compelling package to offer. And it truly could replace my Apple productivity system. The key question for me is the continuing cost of managing a Notion database and workspace worth it? Is it worth feeling productive versus actually getting stuff done? Or can I be more productive in this more complex, more powerful tool. Let me know in the comments down below. And if you wanted to check out my previous video about the real problem with Notion, you can do that here. Get subscribed for more Notion videos here in the month of October. And as always, I'll see you in the next one. Later. <laughs>